Hello everyone, I just want to say a few things before we start off the game. If you want to skip to when the actual intro is, skip to this time. Now, as a kid, I used to watch a lot of movies. I mean, what kid didn't? But there were certain individuals and movies that I could never get enough of. One of those individuals was the recently passed Robin Williams. He always kept me entertained with his high energy and charisma, be it in his movies or his stand-up, which a child of my age at the time probably should not have been watching. As most, if not all of you know, he committed suicide last week, though by the time you have seen this, it will have probably been a little longer, maybe two weeks at the minimum. I thought it would never come down to what it did, and knowing one of my favorite actors that defined my childhood died crushed my heart. I have always loved his performances, be it Good Will Hunting, Flubber, Miss Doubtfire, Aladdin, hell, even Jack. And he's not the only time that happened this year, too. Towards February, we lost Bob Hoskins, an actor, an actor you all likely know as Eddie Valiant from Roger Rabbit, or, more infamously, Mario from the Mario movie. Since these two were always some of my favorite actors, I decided to record a game as tribute to them that was based off a movie they both started, which was always one of my favorite movies as a child, and still is to this day, Hook from 91. A story of an age, Peter Pan. So, with all that said, let's start off the game. Hit that intro, future me, and one that's hopefully more enthusiastic.
Ugh, what a cutscene, and we still got more to come. Alrighty, almost seven minutes in and I can finally have some stuff to say. Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Hook. Uh, you can already tell why I did doing this just by that like minute and a half long intro thing I recorded about two days ago actually. So anyway, basic controls, well first off, uh, I'm not going to be speaking over the cutscenes because I don't want to have to insult any of the actors incidentally just by impersonating them. So, oh uh, well, but anyway, basic controls are actually rather simple. There's only two buttons on the controller you use. B button for jump and Y for attack. However, by holding down Y, you begin running. Admittedly, your uh, acceleration's a bit stilted, though. Uh, when you're in water, you hold B to swim. You don't want to actually swim automatically. Uh, those little leaves you have up at the top are our health, and cherries or apples will recover them. Uh, cherries do one, apples f fully recover you. You have a maximum of four leaves, and you can find them in later stages. Uh, well, I'll get into what fly is momentarily. Also, your jump is really weird. Anyway, here's Tinkerbell. Uh, be by touching her, uh, as disgusting as that sounds, uh, we get our fly meter filled up, and by pressing B twice, we can begin flying, which is really well done, actually. The control for it's pretty good, if not a bit slippery all other overall. Uh, you're also going to notice that I'm actually going to be dying a lot throughout this game, but my lives aren't going to decrease because I'm using an infinite lives code because this game is hard. Anyway, first boss is Rufio. Uh, he's actually really simple. He only has a couple of attacks, uh, a normal sword swipe and a charge, and, and the charge attack is when you hit him because he uh, rests for a bit afterwards. Very easy, just do that three times and you win. Anyway, uh, interesting little fact actually, Rufio in the movie is played by Dante Bosco, who would later voice Prince Zuko in Avatar The Last Airbender. By the way, I'm going to say this probably in every part, but I love this game's soundtrack. It's not a direct adaptation of the movies, but it's still damn good. Then again, anything George, Lu uh, not George Lucas, <laughs> John Williams touches is just gold. So yeah, that was our basic introductory stage, very easy. Although, interesting little fact, uh, even though that was the first stage of the game, uh, though, the scenes that those are uh, that stage is based off of takes place at the halfway point of the movie. Because the first hour alone of the movie is pretty much just him getting into Neverland and meeting the Lost Boys and Hook. And then the whole training sequence occurs, and then in the last like 45 minutes that's when all the good action happens. Mind you, I enjoy the movie overall. Anyway, time for stage two. Uh, I don't think this is based off anything from the movie. 
Uh, that, well, first off, uh, you uh, the leaves here are what increase your life. And you're gonna see the pirates and enemies dropping various little trinkets. All those do is increase your points. I think every, either 10,000 or 100,000 points you get an extra life. Mind you, that infinite lives code I mentioned, that doesn't really matter. Because I'll say now, this game is hard. <laughs> Anyway, at the beginning, you saw me actually shooting lasers out of my sword. That's because we had Pan's sword. But, uh, like Zelda, if you get hit once, you lose it. And then you'll be able to find it as a level- as a... item in later on stages. That's the cherry I mentioned. Now, I'm gonna say right now, uh, for those who haven't seen the movie, first off, go and watch it. It's one of the best movies ever. <laughs> well... It's actually one of those... I'll get more into that if we ever do a commentary, but, but it, I love it. I will say this game does take liberties with it, but to make an interesting game, you kind of have to do that sometimes. Anyway, stage two here in the forest is rather easy. We have our first pirate enemies, uh, the sword guys, who are pathetically easy. The arrow guys, who... Well, first off, yay, extra life! And I lose it immediately. Great work, me. Uh, the archer guys, which will shoot three arrows in the air, however you can knock them out of the way with your sword, or knife in my current case. Uh, the bats, which swoop down and fly right at you, a la Castlevania. And the spiders, who are pretty much as unthreatening as you can get. I will say, uh, Peach Jump actually has quite a bit of momentum to it. And by that, well, actually, not momentum, that's not the right word. Uh, floatiness is the correct term, because, uh, it goes for a while. Anyway, uh, control speaking out of the way. We've got our second boss here, which I'm not even sure if it has a name. Uh, but I will say right now, he is easy. Uh, he teleports between any of these six holes on these stumps. I think it's six, it might be five. No, that's six. And you have to hit him three times. Well, and you have to hit him when he hit, pops out randomly three times in order to beat him. Uh, this left corner I'm in right now, though, is the safest spot, because none of the acorns, which are what actually downed you, along with the... stretchy fist things, uh, never come over here. This is honestly a really easy boss. Just watch out for when they come out of that hole, and you're pretty much good. I know I haven't really been talking much this part, but it, it's because of that long intro cutscene. <laughs> uh, six minutes. Not even Metal Gear Solid was... Actually, no, was Metal Gear Solid that bad? I don't remember. Anyway, that's the end of Stage 2. I'm probably gonna get a bit more into the mechanics and stuff next part. <laughs> Sorry if the part bored you, but, uh... I wanna show up that intro cutscene. Too bad, just takes forever. But with that, I'm gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And next time on Let's Play Hook, we're going into Stage 3. See you guys then.